When it comes to single board computers, as you might know, Raspberry Pi offers a lot of flexibility that we can do with it. Thus, besides other operating systems, installing Android in it is not a new idea. But as Android televisions become popular over the years, I am thinking it is not a bad idea to make our old non-Android TV into an Android one. Here if you look at the prices of Android televisions, you will find that they are not pretty cheap and also buying a new one makes this TV a total waste. To get rid of this problem, I can easily use an Android TV box that offers almost all the facilities that a real Android TV should have. But they are not so pocket friendly as well. Cheaper alternatives are not so reliable and many features are missing on them. So in this two part video series, let's take a look at our Raspberry Pi 4 do some test in order to find out is it possible to make an android tv box with it or buying a commercial one is a good idea so let's get started for this project i just go with raspberry pi 4b which is the latest version and a successor of raspberry pi 3b plus according to its specification it is more powerful than its predecessor because of that before doing anything, we have to add a heatsink over its system on the chip. And also, I have used a fan to cool the heatsink down. It is important to say that Raspberry Pi 4B, what I have right now, is the 4GB RAM variant. This project can be possible in the 2GB RAM variant also. Anyway, for starters, we need a 16GB microSD card which I firstly formatted into its standard settings by using SD card formatter. Then I downloaded LineageOS 16.0 from the developer's website which is based on Android 9.0. Afterwards, I unzip it and get this file. Then I used Balanaya to flash the image file onto the SD card. When the flashing is successfully completed, I insert the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi. For the display, I used the micro HDMI to HDMI cable. That micro HDMI goes to the Raspberry Pi and the HDMI goes to the television. For the power, I use USB Type-C cable and a 5 volt 2 ampere power adapter to power the Raspberry Pi. Although it is recommended to use 5 volt 3 ampere power supply, but currently I don't have any, so I stick with 5 volt 2 ampere one. Also, I used a wireless keyboard and mouse for the inputs. After switching on the power, both these lights start blinking, and on the screen, as you can see, Lineage OS is booting. When this process has been completed, we jump up into this screen. Here, click on next select language then select time zone afterwards choose your wi-fi name enter the password and click on connect then next on these windows you don't need to do anything so click on next skip and start respectively okay as you can see the android is successfully installed right now android 9.0 is running anyway to get the Google Play services on our system, we have to install G apps on the Raspberry Pi. Constacang's developers are recommending Pico G apps, which has the bare minimum Google Play functionalities. To download the G apps, I visit the opengaps.org and select ARM. Afterwards, I choose the Android version, which in my case is Android 9.0. Then I choose the Pico and click this download button. When the download is finished, I copy this file into a different pen drive. Next, we need a zip file called recovery to boot. I am copying recovery to boot and G apps simultaneously into my pen drive. Okay, moving on. On the Raspberry Pi, go to the settings, about and then tap the build number 7 times. That actually enable the developer option. Now let's move on to the developer option by clicking on the system, advanced and then developer option. Here turn on the root access by clicking on root access obviously and select 
apps and ADB. Afterwards, turn the local terminal on. Then I find the terminal from the app drawer. Right now, I am inserting that pen drive into the USB port of the Raspberry Pi where I copied the zip files named recovery to boot and G apps. Then on the local terminal, I write SU that determines the super user and press enter. Now we get this pop-up message. Click on allow, then use this command rpi4 recovery.sh. Now we get this message that indicates Raspberry Pi will boot into the recovery mode if we restart the machine. So we type reboot and press enter. After a couple of seconds, it reboots and automatically gets us into the TWRP recovery. First, swipe the slider to allow the modification. To install the G apps, press the install button and then click on select storage and choose USB OTG. As you can see, the two GIF files which are located on my pen drive. Select open gaps ARM 9.0 Pico. On the next window, here you have to swipe this slider to confirm flash. The G apps is installing. It takes a couple of minutes to install. When the installation is successful, we need to click on wipe Delvic and then swipe to wipe. The TWRP icon can help me to enter into the home screen and in this window, again, click on wipe then swipe to factory reset now again click on the twrp icon to enter into the home screen then click on install select recovery to boot and swipe to confirm flash done now we have to just press reboot system that's it then the os takes a bit of time to boot when this madness is successful, we will go through all the setup procedure of an Android system. After completing the setup, we get this error message. This message is regarding device registration. Just ignore them for now because we will solve it later. When the setup procedure is completed, you will notice that the interface of LineageOS on your Raspberry Pi basically looks like an Android, not Android TV. I will fix that later. But first solve the Google Play services issue as it constantly provides notifications. To solve this problem, download an application called Device ID, which can be found on my website geekisomo.com. Here we get the Google service framework code. Click on it and then click on the copy button on this dialog box. We need this ID later. Ok, click on the Play Store's error message from the notification panel. It automatically redirects us into this window. In this window, click on this link. This link will redirect us into the device registration page. Here you need to sign in with your Google account. I have done it already, so I don't need to do that. Now paste the Google service framework ID by pressing the Ctrl plus V from your keyboard. And then click on register. After a minute or two, the process will be completed. To confirm this, scroll down a bit on this web page and you get a number like this. Now restart the machine by holding the F5 key from your keyboard. When our machine is successfully booted up, we still get this notification from Google Play services. This issue can easily be fixable. Open the Play Store and click on sign in. After a couple of minutes, we get this sign in window. Now use your user ID and password which you have used during the device registration. Now this problem is resolved. The Play Store is also working perfectly fine. Let's test it properly by downloading an application. I want to download a browser in my system. Anyway, it is downloading right now. But I completely forgot something to tell you. I haven't completed the setup of the Pi. So I just click on the home button and move into the home screen. From the notification section, I have clicked on this message which takes me to the setup window again. After completing the setup process, which I think is not necessary to explain to you in details because everyone has an Android device and everything here is the as same as that. After completing the setup, I have come back onto the Play Store and notice that the app is downloading. After a couple of seconds, it successfully downloaded into my machine. As I said before, the interface looks like Android, not Android TV. To change this, I need a launcher. Several are available, but I am using right now is TV Home Launcher, 
which is available on Play Store though but I want to sideload it from my pen drive. Again another problem has started. After connecting my pen drive the OS can't detect it. It is missing from the file explorer too. After a couple of minutes of researching, I realized that it is another bug of the OS. To fix this issue, I immediately downloaded ES File Explorer from its official website and installed it. In the ES File Explorer, I found that the pen drive still not properly detected, so I remove it from the USB port and insert it again. Now it is detected and properly usable, so I open it and install the launcher. When this installation is successful, I click on the home button. Here I get the two options. I choose TV home and click on always. That's it. If you are thinking that this is the only launcher that you can use, then you are completely wrong. Here is the bunch of other TV launcher app that you can install on your Raspberry Pi. I am putting the link of this article on my video description. Check it out. Now you can notice that the Android here looks like an Android TV, but to properly utilize its features, we need to sideload some more applications like Actor TV, Set Orientation, etc. You can get all of these applications on my website geekisomo.com. Link is in the video description. Then I restart the machine. Now looking at its interface and features, we can say that Raspberry Pi 4 can easily convert a normal TV into an Android TV. So we can say that the Raspberry Pi 4 has the potential to be used as an Android TV box. In a nutshell, the project is successful. But still, we haven't installed many useful applications and not properly optimized the Pi to get its maximum performance. And most importantly, right now, we aren't using any enclosure to protect it. So in the next part, we will optimize our system, install some applications, and finally, we will find a suitable case that can protect it from the environment. Now it is time to end this part of this series. If you are planning to recreate this project then all the components, parts list, programs and tools are found on my website gigisomo.com. Link is in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new then don't forget to like, share and subscribe and turn on the notification bell for future updates. Thank you so much.